number three is spaced repetition. Now, spaced repetition is a way to make sure these memories do stay current. Yep. And I've done this so many times before. I know this. I know this really well. I know this really well. Just the other day, I tried to play a piece on the piano. You were there. I was there. It was a Debussy piece called Paul Le Piano. And it's the second movement. And it's a beautiful piece of music. And it was my favorite piece. And I played it day in, day out for years and years. I tried to play it the other day. I, wouldn't, I would have bet money that I'd never forget how to play it. But I've forgotten. And if you don't revisit things, it's just your brain is only designed to yeah. really hold on to things that it thinks are relevant. So space repetition, which has been widely written about, um, is just a way of making sure that you review things kind of proportional to how well you remember them. And if you remember them really well, you don't need to review them as often. And that's just mm, the bleeding obvious, yeah, it is. right? Isn't it? Like all these things, a lot of them are the bleeding obvious. I mean, what's your experience? Because you would, you would have built that in to like your revision timetable, wouldn't you, when you were sort yeah, of studying? Yeah, so yeah. I, would, I, would, I would definitely have, I didn't know about space repetition. You didn't know what it was called, you knew about it. You didn't know it had a name. Yeah, yeah of yeah. course. <laughs> maybe, maybe names would have made it easier, yeah. but it was just the idea of, you know, looking at the topics, checking off things which I knew well, and kind of putting like question marks on the things I didn't know too well, yeah. and knowing that I'd have to come back to this yeah. more often than not. Yeah. Um, and something around the idea of memorization was when, was when I was, you know, especially in, during the last couple of years of uni, when I was, when I had to kind of reproduce very, very rigorous proofs for pure mathematics. And that, the only way I've kind of figured it out, and I, I even now I'm like a little bit um, uncertain whether it was rote memorization or not. And yeah. I, I don't think it was because at the end of the yeah. day, I actually ended up You understood it. it. But that was only after rewriting it over and over yeah. and over again. Yeah. Um, and when, it, when I did do that, um, things started to click. Like there were connections and as, as you're saying, yeah. hooks between one line to the next, but also hooks between one section of the proof to the previous section of the proof. So you were, again, you're trying to make as yeah. many hooks as possible. You're trying, to, you're trying to be able to remember it. You know, it's easy to, ah, this was a good one. Um, yeah. We talked about it the other day. Yeah. Uh, we can recite A, B, C, D to whatever letter. Yeah. Um, can, yeah. you, can I say, tell me the 16th letter? And, and No chance. I kind of know. 13th is, um, or is it 12th? 13th, I think, because it's halfway through. Yeah. So I could sort of work it out, but not very well. Yeah. I would go A, B, C, D. It's, yeah. it's kind of, I guess what I'm trying to show is that, again, we, we make yeah. hooks in only certain directions, yeah. sometimes linearly, sometimes, and so. That's a time based hook, isn't it? It's so is. A, B, C, D, E, F, G, and you know what's coming next, but you can't randomly access that. Exactly. Interesting, isn't it? Yeah.